No prescribed fire is uh, worth the cost of, of unsafe conditions, whether that be uh, in the weather that is actually conduct or being a part of that particular day, unsafe wind conditions, whether that's too strong a wind, low humidity levels that are hard to control the fire, but also personal safety. And when a fire boss and a crew is established, the fire boss must make sure that the crew is adequately prepared and that comes down to not only understanding what the prescription is and how to safely conduct it, what those roles might be, but are they also safely prepared clothing wise or do they have the right tools in hand and in place to be able to conduct or to do their, their responsibility or their role in that activity. All right, so some factors of, of safety that individuals need to be concerned about is radiant heat, uh, clothing that you might need to, be ha or to wear on site, also the use of water, uh, how much water do I need and what kind of uh, uh, safety do I need to have as far as additional water uh, just immediately off site that I can reload or replenish. Equipment, uh, making sure that all the right equipment is there and on site and in good working condition prior to being used. Smoke is also another uh, safety issue that is not only realized on site but immediately away from the site as well. Uh, so across highways, airports, railroads, uh, schools, municipalities, anything that smoke might have an impact on, smoke is something that we need to pay particular attention to. Cleanup of the site. Uh, a fire is never over until everything that could possibly uh, reignite something uh, adjoining to it is made sure that it is completely out or mopped up, if you will. Mop up might be a term that is commonly used by burn bosses to make sure that individuals go back and patrol or police the area that was exposed to prescribed fire to make sure that all combustible material is out and that any kind of spread away from that area is under control. Radiant heat, uh, the heat coming off of a fire just being, uh, even though you may not be in a direct path, but the actual heat coming off that fire can be extremely hot, causing bodily harm or injury to an individual. Any time that the radiant heat or the heat from the fire gets too intense, the igniters can back away from it and let that area actually burn out before proceeding. But clothing, if they get too close to the fire and they have any kind of synthetic material that might melt against their skin, uh, those are also dangerous activities or dangerous possibilities that an individual could go through uh, being too close to the fire. So having any kind of protective clothing that is fire retardant or at least cotton is a requirement. Gloves, eye protection, eye protection and even breathing apparatuses if that's necessary. Hard hat equipment as possible or something to kind of shield the head and protect them if they are in areas that may actually cause damage to the head as well. Some of the individuals here today actually have clothing that is uh, a fire retardant type clothing. Leather gloves, shoes that uh, again won't melt with the intensity of the, the potential fire or the heat that you'd be exposed to as necessary. So within every prescribed fire, uh, the ideal situation would be that uh, the fire actually consumes all the fuel or all the fuel that is present within that prescription area and it extinguishes itself. However, we do have tools that we often use and that would be anything from fire, rakes, uh, even leaf blowers, materials uh, that can be actually extinguished with the use of these types of tools in hand or at least present on the site itself. Individuals need to know how to use them, when to use them, and how to safely conduct the use of those particular tools to extinguish fire when necessary. Hopefully this happens during the mop-up procedure or portion of the actual prescribed burn itself. Having all and, and primarily the right type of equipment that is necessary is uh, nothing to be understated. Having the ability to respond to a spot fire or an escape from the actual burn unit is something that you have to be prepared for, you have to plan for, and hope that you never have to use. But with a prescription, we're trying to minimize the opportunity for any kind of escape, 
prescription is something that we um, really focus on trying to safely conduct a burn uh, to reach the goals that are really established by uh, the manager of the land that we're actually exposing to prescribed fire. So a prescription has all the ingredients to try to accomplish those goals, but to do it safely and in a controlled environment. The type of smoke that is produced from any kind of vegetation that is exposed to prescribed fire uh, can vary greatly. Many parts of the, of the state have uh, infestations of eastern red cedar and within that many uh, volatile fuels or volatile oils that are within those needles of those eastern red cedar will put up a lot of black smoke. And certainly any kind of tall grass prairie that has a huge fuel load, maybe three or 4,000 pounds of, of fuel to actually be burned, can put up a lot of smoke as well and a lot of particulate matter that uh, can cause uh, breathing issues for many people downrange from that. So the type of fuel makes a lot of difference and uh, the expectation as well of what kind of smoke and what kind of particulate matter will uh, originate from that fire. Certainly not only on site but downrange away from that prescription area is a really important piece of the puzzle to be able to conduct a fire safely. Uh, wetter types of fuels will produce a lot more white smoke and because of that, a lot of times that smoke can be hard to uh, not only breathe in, but certainly the downrange part of that uh, can be extremely dangerous for individuals downrange from the, the actual pres prescribed burnt area. Another thing that comes into play as well is just particulate matter. What kind of ash and what kind of residue is, is not only present uh, right next to that area or downrange from that prescribed burn area, but many miles, if not hundreds of miles away. So getting that smoke up into the atmosphere, getting it dispersed as quickly and as safely as possible is really key to being able to conduct that fire safely, not only on site, but for, for many individuals downrange from that fire. You might hear a an airplane going over the top of us. We're just directly to the east of an airport here at Manhattan. And so one of the things that we talk about is minimizing any kind of smoke generation next to uh, uh, really any kind of public access like an airport, schools, uh, any kind of municipality where there's a, a large number of people. Not only because of the smoke that's generated that might cause uh, the inability to see, but also because of health issues that come along with breathing smoke. Mop-up crews now will just make sure that the boundaries are extinguished. Any prescribed fire is really not done until the mop-up is completed. And as can happen many times over the next 24 to 48 hours, depending upon just how dry the conditions are, uh, any dead wood, uh, felled trees, or any kind of uh, uh, heavier material like wood can continue to burn. Cow pies, manure piles will continue to burn even when you don't see any flame that may actually reignite fuel that has not been completely consumed uh, for a period of time. Wind shifts, changes in the direction of the wind, lower humidities, all those are things to consider in the application of a fire, not only at the time of the day that you're actually doing the fire, but looking outward 24 to 48 hours to make sure that uh, we don't have any escapes after the fire is actually uh, completed for that day. Okay, so what we're actually going to prepare for here is to lay down a what we call a, a wet line on the upwind side of this pine tree. We want to protect it from the effect of fire, so we're actually wetting the fuel in front of that. And then one of the first ignition uh, pieces of this actual burn here will be to uh, light along that wet line and let it burn away from it so the heat of the fire does not damage the pine tree. They've got a gravel road on the west side of this 
and so they will be able to tie into that. So you've got a secured area, then they will proceed into the wind. Again, is out of kind of the northeast, and they'll be able to burn away from that tree safely and protect it from fire. Now they'll ignite right along the edge of the water so that the fire will crawl back away from the wet line. And again, they can protect the tree from the heat or the intensity of the heat. It will still get some radiant heat, but it won't burn in underneath it if they're able to protect it with that wet line. Again, you can't stress enough having the right equipment on the site. This being a training event, a good opportunity when things aren't going too fast to be able to give instruction. You can see in a couple situations here, just in uh, uh, the application of of uh, water, the angle in which it's sprayed, the, the method in which it's delivered, whether it's in a stream or a fan, uh, being able to save as much water, but also be able to effectively do what you need the water to do uh, when it is applied. So good training event for individuals to be able to learn. So again, we're trying to protect uh, not only the building that's immediately to our west, but we've got a wind that's a little bit out of the northeast. So we're going to light a flank fire right along the edge of the road, using that as a fire break. We've got suppression equipment nearby. They'll progress just at a speed that allows them to ensure safety is, is uh, still being met there in the ignition. Wetting down everything from utility poles to road signs. The older the drier utility poles are or posts, the more easy, easily they are ignited. Even fence posts that have a lot of bark on them from uh, when they were originally put in can be uh, areas that fire will get inside of or underneath the bark and start to burn. You may not be able to see it, but they can actually smolder for quite some time and then actually uh, reignite and burn pretty effectively. So safety, whether that be equipment, understanding what their roles are, making sure that they have all the right tools or all necessities that a fire boss and a crew must be responsible for before they actually start to fire. Mm -hmm.